Hi there. I thought I'd take a moment here to create a tutorial about uh, making generative music using Ableton Live. Generative music is a kind of a subset of algorithmic art. Um, algorithmic art is using mathematical techniques to generate art independent of human uh, kind of intervention uh, using, you know, like basically math um, drawing techniques and things to create stuff. And as you can see here, you can get some really beautiful results with this. Uh, these are all just generative using algorithms um, of various kinds. And most of this kind of art is visual art, like this. Uh, but sometimes people use it to create music as well, because music, of course, is simply a set of numbers and frequencies being played back. One of the big pioneers in this area, is, as in so many areas, is Brian Eno, uh, who started doing a lot of this sort of thing back in the 70s, using uh, loops of various links to create pieces that evolved and changed over time. That sort of thing. So this is one of my favorite things to do, actually, as an inspiration for creating music, is to just kind of let Ableton generate music uh, and then kind of find bits of it that I like and loop them and turn them into, into uh, more traditional, repetitive kind of rock and roll stuff. So let's go over to Ableton Live here and just get started. Now, what I've got here is just one, two MIDI tracks. Uh, this one has a, um, what is it called? Electric. Uh, uh, instrument on it, which is basically running a version of the Rhodes electric piano. It's a nice, simple sound, really pretty to work with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a clip here, just an empty MIDI clip by double clicking. So as you can see, we've got a nice little basic Rhodes sound here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a series of eighth notes on middle C. So there's one, and I'm just going to use the, um, on Mac, Command D, duplicate to just create Simple eighth notes, one note. Pretty straightforward. When we play it back, you get this. Not very exciting. But we can start going in and using uh, some of the tools that are built directly into Ableton to make this more interesting. So over here, we're going to go to MIDI effects. And the first thing we're going to do is add in a random plugin before the piano. So what this does is it basically takes any incoming MIDI note and makes it a random note. Um, you've got a couple of choices here, the chance that it'll be random. We're going to set that all the way up to we'll go like 99. And we'll go 100, what the hell. So choices is how many notes uh, can be added, basically how far up or down the scale goes. So 12 is pretty good. That gives us a full octave of, of notes. Um, the scale will then go uh, add and subtract, so it'll play either an octave down and an octave up. We're not going to mess with that right now. What we are going to mess with is, if you can see the sign here, instead of add or subtract, we're going to go uh, to buy. And assuming that means bi-directional. But what that basically means is, it means that the notes can either be above or below the original note on the scale. They can go higher, they can go lower. So let's listen to what that sounds like. Okay, but it's uh, not in any key. It's pretty boring. It's not very interesting. It just sounds like random notes. But we can fix that. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go in with this scale plugin and put it after the random plugin. Now, what this will do is force every note into a scale uh, of your choosing. This is a weird little setup, the way that it works, and I've, I kind of figured it out. But what I usually do is just go into the presets, and I pick... For example, we'll pick uh, a minor pentatonic scale, which is my personal favorite. Now let's listen to this playback again. Now that's all in C minor pentatonic. Much more pleasing, much more harmonic, it's in tune, it sounds cool. So that's one, that's, that's, that's the beginning of doing this, but there's a few more interesting things you can do. So eighth notes are pretty boring. Um, not actually that cool at all, uh, unless you're making straight house music, and even then it's not that interesting. So, let's change this. Let's give it something a little bit different here. Let's make an actual rhythm. So, we'll turn this into a quarter note, followed by two eighth notes, followed by a space, and then followed by two more eighth notes. That gives us something more like a rhythm. So let's try that.
Okay, it's a little bit cooler. Got a little bit more of a cool little vibe going on to it. But if we keep that going over and over again, it's not going to be that interesting. So let's create a couple more clips and do some tricks here. So first thing I'm going to do is create another clip. And I'm going to give this those original just eighth notes. I'm going to create another one. And you can put the note anywhere on the scale you like because it randomizes it. But I just always go with keeping it middle C just because. So let's give this one quarter, quarter, eighth, eighth. Eighth, eighth. And again, we'll just go full quarters this time. Two, three, four. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to go and select all these clips. We're going to go over here to the L for launch. What we're going to do is have this follow action. So what you can do is have, you can have the actual uh, clips in Ableton do different things once they've played. You can make them stop, you can make them so they only trigger when you click them, or you can do this, which is kind of interesting. So follow action. What we're gonna do here is go and select any, which means after this one plays, play any other clip. How often? All the time. Now that should have worked for all of the clips. So let's just start playing one and see what we get. Okay, so we only got four clips, four rhythms, so it's not going to be that different, but it's kind of cool. It gives you a little bit of, a, of a, something to work with here. Now, where this starts to get even more interesting is when you start adding chords. Now, you notice I have two MIDI channels here. Let's actually delete this one. Let's just straight up duplicate this one because it'll make it simpler. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to have this playing a different note. So we're basically getting uh, two notes at a time. It's not really a chord, but it's kind of close enough. So... So that's pretty cool. It's a uh, that's a nice little kind of mellow, melancholy vibe. And that's basically it. You can do this with as many instruments as you like. You can do uh, um, you can force different octaves. For example, you could go back in with this uh, with this MIDI and um, have it go in and force it to play up an octave. So, for example, we can have this be higher. And then, for example, although I actually don't like that that much, I think it sounds cooler when it's just kind of these mellow chords. And then you could, for example, add in, uh, we've got a little bit of delay here, so let's add some delay to it. And right there, you've basically got everything you need to have a simple, generative piece of music going. Now, one of the things that you can also do here Create new music, create a new track here. Create a certain MIDI track. MIDI 2. Okay, so what we can do here is we can have this track generating the MIDI, and then we can have that go out to another track. Um, why would you want to do that? If you want to record this and record the actual notes that were being generated, for example. Um, unfortunately, there's no real way to make multiple channels do this. Um, but let's see if we take this off. There we go. So let's take these two tracks and we'll move that over here. So now these two tracks aren't actually playing an instrument, they're just generating notes. So what we're going to do is we're going to have MIDI 2 output and we're going to have it on that third track. Now what we're going to do is set this to monitor in what's coming into the track and we're going to record everything that comes in as just a clip. So first we'll arm it to record, and... As you can see, it's actually recording those notes rather than simply randomly playing them. So if you record them like this and play it back, it's going to be the same every time. Otherwise, if you just play the original two tracks, it will always be different. So... All 
All right, so now what we've done is we've created eight bars of this random vibe. So we can actually just, if we wanted to at this point, delete these tracks. I'm just going to stop them. But what we're going to do here is switch that back to auto. So let's say, for example, I just really like measures three and four. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this loop here and we're going to change it. We're going to go to three and set it to be a two-bar loop down here in the loop section. So when I play it back, then for example, let's go ahead and find a cool little beat here. Like that. So I'm going to take that and throw this here. So let's start it up again, but with the beat. I'm going to compress this a little bit just to give it a cool little sound. It's not really necessary, but I just kind of think doing that, make it as loud as the drums are. I'm going to go and do a acoustic compression. Here, if you wanted to, you could take that same clip, take different measures of it, make them into different clips, looping in different places. And essentially, you've got the beginnings of a basis of a song here. You could add in a bass line, you could add in a melody, anything you want. So it's a really nice little kind of a tool for just kind of finding a new way to start thinking about making new tracks, making new ideas. Um, it's not perfect, obviously, and if I was going to do anything with this music, I would add a little bit more to it, maybe change the notes a bit, but, but as a way of just kind of starting out, it's really useful. And occasionally you find stuff that's absolutely perfect, and you just roll with it. This actually, what I've created here, would not be a bad basis for a song. Um, so, yeah, and you can, as, I, as I said, you can do this with any instrument, anything you want. You can even do it with drums if you want to. That probably sounds stupid. But that's a basic way of starting to learn how to do this stuff. Um, and I hope you find that interesting and or useful uh, in your own musical endeavors. So thanks for watching me ramble on about this, and uh, 